Okay, we're back for part two of the art of losing. We say that in kind of a tongue in cheek way because we've got three of the biggest winners you can imagine in uh, in solo piping and pipe bands. Uh, ben Duncan from Edinburgh, uh, Jenny Hazard from Edinburgh as well, and uh, Bruce Gandy from Halifax, Nova Scotia. Thanks again for uh, for taking the time, everyone. So, you know, in, in the first part, we talked a lot about sort of kind of the psychology, the your own methodology, why we do things. Uh, let's let's continue on that tack, but maybe a little more personal, uh, you know, uh, Ben, you know, thinking about your your long military career uh, as pipe major of the Royal Scots Dragoon Guards, which you've just wound up. We can't imagine in the military that they would teach you that uh, losing is a good thing or or anything but winning and being being successful. Uh, and something as serious as, as, you know, combat and being a soldier. But uh, have you ever been to square uh, that with, you know, doing battle in piping competitions? Yeah, I'd be surprised actually that, so the army actually teaches you that no plan survives first contact with the enemy. So actually, um, they're, they're not, just, they're, they're setting you up for uh not to expect to win as such. You're never expecting to win. You're just doing what you can do, hoping that the plan works. And I suppose that relates pretty well into the, in the pipe. And it's, a, hmm. it's an exact, exact approach when it comes to um, comes to competing. If I, I'll try my plan, if the plan didn't work, then there's next week or the week after, or the week after. And, it, uh, and it's just about kind of plugging, plugging along um, with it until, until hopefully you're successful, um, which I suppose relates relates to that um, that methodology that the that the army use as such. Is it kind mm -hmm. of teaching you like strategies for not teaching you how to lose, but teaching you how best to cope with it, or how to change what you're doing, or how to adapt so that if you if you're heading towards losing, or if you if you haven't achieved something, then how best to to manage that to to do better is that is that something that you kind of you feel like you've learned through military and and apply to piping i suppose to an, to an extent to an extent yes even probably younger than but before i joined the army really my my, my train of thoughts I, I, so even with the lessons but andrews i used to always always say that um, you go out and you do Go out and do what you can. What you can do, and that, and that's it. You're not, you're not going out there to win. If you go out there and play the best tune you possibly can, then that's it. And then, I suppose that's where I get the the drive from. It is such. I remember my very, very first time losing as such in the uh, under twelves match at the Royal British Legion Scotland. <laughs> Surely and not. I came in. <laughs> I, I think it was eight at the time. I think King George the Fifth Army. And I thought it was the best King George's first army I'd ever played. <laughs> um, and I came third and I was gutted. Uh, but there we go. But, but I learned a lot from that. And I, and I wanted more of it. And, uh, and, and soon realised that actually it's not, it's not really about the winner at all. It's just about playing the tunes, enjoying the tunes. And, um, and it's a bonus. It's a bonus if you end up with something amazing with it. Uh, yeah, Bruce, you know, on that note, you know, it kind of reminds me, like, you've been at it for uh, being a competing piper for, well, you know, about five, going on five decades, I, I can't count, but, you know, okay. proudly, you started at a very young age, but at what point, you know, do you recognize, you uh, understand what Ben's talking about at, you know, age 12, at, at what point did you, as a piper, uh, realize uh, or learn how to cope with not finishing first? Um, the point I learned to cope, I'm not sure. I mean, again, for me, it was, it was, there was a big turning point just shortly after coming to Scotland the first few times in the eighties and having a couple of good runs and, and, you know, usually being in the prize list or winning something in Ontario and then going there and getting flattened two or three times and going, oh. This is awful, you know, and it was a big, it was a big part of not selling, but in my book was when I, I talked to uh, someone and, and it was a psychologist about understanding why things didn't happen. And it became easier to cope with, 
of not winning when I developed this, well, I don't think I developed it really, but the 180 factor that I called it. And it was, you, you could complain about every reason why you should have got first and you can complain about every reason why, uh, you know, John Smith did and shouldn't have. But it, what really sold it for me was when I actually started to write down every issue that was wrong that day or could have been wrong. And then I started to write down what the 180 fix was you know like we told everybody in the obvious ones you know when you don't know where you're going you show up early when you, <laughs> if it's freezing you put on gloves I mean, those are the easy ones but when you start to really try to dig into why you didn't win and you think of every factor that might have come in there and how you would fix it that was the first start and then i, I talked to a, another person again about it to try and understand it better and it convinced me that if you write both the issue and the solution and what the result will be after, you start to understand it. And I'm, I fully believe that it made me put up with not winning because I could, I could look at it and say, why did it happen? Because you're either competing and going, yay, that was good, or you're, you're not winning and saying, well, why? And it, it, you know, I tell students often, well, when you told me, you know, first I made that mistake in the third part, and then that threw my concentration off. I made a choke, and then I missed a bar. I'm like, well, that's great. You just justified the three things, you know, against your tick mark. That doesn't really tell me how it's going to be better next time. Like, I'm going to tell you to play it again. Is it going to be the same thing if I stare at you a little harder, <laughs> on you, which I'm going to do? And they're like, oh, no. But you need to figure out how to rectify something that's not working. And that's sort of... It, it goes it goes back to that real turning point where I did think I played good one year in the marches. I think it was the marches at Inverness and I was fifth or something. And and I heard a couple of them and I thought, there's no way that they were better than mine. <laughs> but I, when I got home, I thought, you know what? I actually like those judges too. So, you know, it's, it's not where I'm complaining about judging. I thought they like that guy better. How come? And it started... What did they do? Did I was their D throw nicer and more rhythmic? Or, <laughs> or, you know, was it just their pipes? Was it what? What was it? Maybe that they liked, and how could I adjust my playing, or what could I do that's within my acceptance? Mm -hmm. I'm not going to just play out to please someone unless it's if it's outside of my musical beliefs kind of thing. And that's I still do that today. I I have a pad and I write down things that did it. London was probably my very, very best example ever of doing that because last year I was, I was so ready to play and I wanted it, honestly, I wanted it that bad. But between having tons of sessions, you know, on the brain and everything with someone and then dealing with all this COVID stuff in the travel to get over there, thinking I had it aced because, you know, I've got my certificate, I got my vaccination, I got a computer bag with like seven pages of <laughs> get in and out of Canada and everything. I thought I finally got it when I arrived to London. But when I got up to play at the Braddock, I, I was I was 10 seconds into the tune going, oh my God, I wish I could have a do-over. Like oh, I just knew oh, I didn't. I knew I didn't with your head more than you know. <laughs> and yeah, I just knew that I didn't tune the pipe quite right. And there was no mm. reason because I was playing really good all week and I've got recordings for it but I had had so many sort of therapeutic sessions and everything that I think I just had way too much on my mind. Mm -hmm. You know, I had 50 answers for everything instead of just get the pipes right and play, man. <laughs> this year, I was more prepared for that and in a way better spirit and attitude about it. And, you know, and I, and I had great success there this year. Mm -hmm. I think what you said there is kind of important too, that, um, about the, I quite like that idea of if you feel like you played well and you maybe you maybe haven't won and then taking that away and, and really thinking hard about all the different things that 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 added up to that you know I think that's really good and it's probably something that that we as pipers don't don't really do that much that you might do if you were if in, in sports or athletics and if it's something that's more physical you maybe think more about that well did I did I sleep enough did I eat right did I you know all those sort of preparations and as you say all the, the things that are on your mind that you can't that you, that, you, that that might affect you more than you realize but I also think it's important 
if you if you feel like you have played really well and you've done as well as you think you can you've done everything you wanted to do your instrument was as good as you wanted it to be you've you've done what you wanted and you still didn't win then I think that's quite important to not to just let it go and, and you know not beat yourself up about it not say oh what what do I need to change what do I need to fix what do I need to make better because maybe maybe it didn't maybe the judges just like somebody else better that day and and then you know I think that's quite important too to be able to say all right disappointing but you know move on don't have to I don't have to change anything necessarily or fix it if I if I'm happy with it even if I didn't like it. <laughs> mm -hmm. And Ben, you say, thinking, you know, that, that you uh, are a, a piper who goes around the games and, you know, really uh, goes at it, you know, sometimes three or four times a week. Uh, do you do you think about, you know, the next time it's going to be better or or uh, that kind of mentality? Like there's always always the next time, um, even though you're you're highly successful. No, no doubt about that. Um, I do. I, well, like I, said, like I said before, if 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 it's not quite gone as I'd planned, then then you know exactly what you've got to do, got to do for the next thing. Um, and you you can only do what you can do. And then um, you're just like getting out in the camper van, don't you? That's that's why you're at all these games. That's, that's <laughs> kind of like it. That's right. Like that's a day out. I was thinking uh, uh, for a, a guy who who drives a Land Rover Defender, it's, uh, <laughs> it's you know it's kind of a winning vehicle. <laughs> I, could, I could say there's a lot of different pressures on people too, Andrew. Um, I mean, I, luckily enough where I'm at, I, I don't have to do anything more. But I do remember the pressure of getting out of the A's and my very first trip to the Glenfiddich, there was no animosity from anyone about anyone. Like there used to be in the A and B grades. It's kind of like, ah, uh, and you know, this 25 years ago, there's still a little of that nasty around with some people. But I, I just remember that first time at the Glenfiddich being scared out of my mind. <laughs> but every single person there was was welcoming to you, and most all of them really, because I think I was the only newbie. And so all of them were you know, welcoming you in and telling you any tips they could about how to just ease yourself in. So it was it was really good where Ben in some instances and others that are going around a lot of these games, they're, they're doing it and there's there's a mission and intact. Yes, it's to play as good as you can, but it's also I need to get that A plus grade to get me in the gold medal now. And those things, but that is a, a tremendous amount of pressure for pipers. Mm -hmm. but, 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 I would actually love to have enough time to just drive around and do the July week just to hear everybody, maybe maybe talk nice to them all and have a tune myself. <laughs> have a good laugh because, you know, I, I do miss that at the games when you're just kind of hanging out on the grass, especially if it's not a miserable day and you're, you're just shooting the breeze with everybody. And then, OK, there's two more to me. I need to go and like get in my game zone now and drop the fun and. I'll go and focus for you know half an hour. Get ready for my MSRP, and then come back and you're having everybody and you know you're having a drink after or whatever. It, it's, the camaraderie is is great at the competitions. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Like you're, you're right, you're right enough, Bruce. So there, I mean there is there is a mission involved. Certainly, certainly when you're when you're trying to work your way up through the grades. So I kind of started to work, work my way along the CPA from I think about 2011 or something. Um, and you're right, you need, in the back of your head, you are always thinking, I do need a couple of prizes just to get me over the edge, just even just to get me into the silver medal, just to get me into the gold medal next year, just in case. And it's, it's, a, it's a safety blanket as such, because if you're not, if you're unsuccessful, I mean, there's only five places in each competition, at, at these big competitions, and there's a, a lot more people that enter them. So if you're unsuccessful, you need something to, potentially back you up for the for the next year so you're thinking right I, I do need this I do need this but in this in the same as in, in, in the same breath though um I mean I, I, I haven't been around the games quite as much in, in recent years but I did I, I went probably for 2014 through to 17 
tried to hit absolutely everything. But it done me it done me really, really good. And actually the, the positives out of it weren't the prizes as such. It was just getting the it's getting mileage in the tunes, mileage in the hands, putting yourself under pressure on a on a weekly basis that then just makes that pressure not feel like pressure anymore. You're just you're comfortable there, you're enjoying what you're doing and, and that's and, and that's about it. Um, I actually had a one year I was playing the song, man. It was absolute trash. It was terrible. And um, but that's all I was focused on that day. I, I wasn't. It was my first first year in the the A grades. March has been me at, at Inverness. So I just thought, uh, we'll jump in here. We'll play, and then uh, we'll, we'll, I'll just go for a pint or something. I'm, <laughs> done, I'm, I'm done with this. Done with this. Uh, and I actually ended up winning winning the competition that year at the at A grade March has been real. And I think it really helped with my head not being so focused on it. I wasn't thinking about winning. You don't put all that pressure onto yourself. Aye, totally. I was just like, well, that's me. There's no silver medal this year. Let's just just have a tune of the night music and see what happens. And and, and that's exactly it. I I was was pretty relaxed tuning the pipes on my thing. I didn't actually come off and think, oh, that was pretty good. I just came off and thought, ah, Oh, good. Right. <laughs> move, move, move on. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 really yeah. interesting the pressures that uh, you know the reality of the pressure you know and, and having to, especially in Scotland, uh, produce prizes to to maintain your status and things. Uh, you know, rather than I mean, everyone is so good. Uh, rather than looking at the big picture, you can't have everyone in. They have to use prizes to sometimes. You know, uh, decide who's going to play and who's going to be admitted and who's not. But you know, Jenny, you know, maybe we we'll just wrap things up with a, a little bit of a, you know, uh, a thought. You know, are piping and pipe band competitions really a metaphor for life in general. Uh, <laughs> you know, where you you know you have failures in life and you know th- things every day sometimes don't go your way, but you have to convert them into some kind of success and move and and carry on a learning kind of thing. Uh, what do you think of that idea? Yeah, I don't know. Like, I think piping and pipe bands is uh, <laughs> it's pretty weird. This thing that we <laughs> that we do, isn't it? Like, you know, it's it is unusual in 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 the co- the competitiveness of it and the like the the level of focus on competition that you know. I think, most people we all know most of our friends that are not in piping might do something they might play some sports you might do a bit of running you might um you know play another kind of music and there might be some element of competition involved but i think what, what we do is is so very focused on competition that it's it's maybe a kind of metaphor for life but it's a bit it's a bit sort of um extremist <laughs> but i i i think that like we started out talking about that if you if you if you approach it in a healthy way then it's a good way of helping and being able to to kind of cope in a healthy way with successes and failures in in wider life as well whether it's in in work or business or or yeah just life in general that that acceptance that things don't always go your way and sometimes you think that you've deserved something that you don't get and you have to be able to be okay with that and sometimes you the reason that you haven't achieved something is because you haven't actually worked hard enough at it or you haven't you know put enough into it and then so that teaches you that if you if you want to to achieve it if you want to do better at it then then you you maybe have to put that that amount of effort in I mean I think that you something we've all sort of alluded to but haven't actually said it's winning is really fun <laughs> you know like we're, you were saying at the beginning about about losing losing kind of sucks and you know that that's what that's what drives us all on and I think we all accept that we're going to lose a lot more than we're going to win but but winning is great and that's you know that's it's it's so much fun and particularly when it involves well I don't know for me in the stage of life that that, that I'm at and what I'm enjoying and being in the pipe band that when you're with your friends and, and there's that camaraderie that goes with it as well then then yeah it's, it is really really good fun but that's what I think that's what drives us on and it's sure it's not all about winning but 
Mm-hmm. We put an awful lot of time and effort and emotion and expense into it. And um, that's, yeah, that's definitely one of the, one of the things that, that drives us, isn't it? So it probably is a metaphor for life in general, because that's not just Python, I don't think. <laughs> I think Ben said that a little bit earlier in that, you know, you can prepare and try and do what you can do in your home. And you have to know that if that's what I'm doing here, that's the best I'm going to do Saturday. Unless you're in that unbelievably select few of, you know, Wayne Gretzky, Michael Jordan, <laughs> type Woods, who had this ability to do something crazy under pressure. But there, I mean, that, that, there's a handful of those people in the world. And I have to deal with that weekly pretty well with a lot of adults um, that start and play in the grade four and three. And I just want to broach that because we've been talking at a high level today. But the, the greatest amount of competitors are in the lower grades and somehow convincing them that what you're doing at home is as good as it's going to be Saturday. So don't try and all of a sudden do something because you heard some other higher level people play and think, oh, yeah, I should do that too. I would say 50% of the people that I teach, at least, that don't have a good day, it's due to their self destruction not coming anywhere close to their their regular day-to-day potential and that's a big thing that we work on all the time is how do you just go out and play like you did in your living room you know and, and it's easy you know you say stuff all the time like why are you worried you're, you're a fireman you're a cop <laughs> your, your day-to-day life is it's a hundred times worse than not getting a prize in the, in the grade three march sort of thing but they, they think <laughs> oh my god i did all this work and part of it is, I think, you know, these people will have families and they all of a sudden bring that into the thing, like I'm taking away family time to do this. Well, either you're allowed to have that time or you're not. And if you're allowed, then you need to use it and not feel guilty taking it. And then you go and try and play the best you can and see, but you know, there's the, the folks need to, if they're gonna warm up and play just the same as a golf game, you know, you, you hit balls in the range or you do like Andrew and I, and you go and you just play and, do what you can, but you can't go feeling terribly guilty or something. And no, I have to do perfect because I'm using up all this time to do it. It's like, I'm you're just plan. And, you know, whatever I get in my practice time is good. And if I had to work four days this week and I didn't get much practice time, well, I'll still go out Saturday and see what I can do. But, it, you know, I can't expect it to be two levels better than it was all of a sudden. Yeah. yeah. So, you know that uh, I want to hit, hit this just to, to conclude, Ben. You know I'm really interested in the the, the military aspect of it, and it sounds like what Bruce is talking about when don't try to be a, a hero, just get your job done uh, to the to your ability. Uh, it's not the time to improvise on the, <laughs> the field of battle. I I don't know. Maybe I'm just talking absolute nonsense because <laughs> I've never been in the military. But th- th- is there something uh, a soldier? You know, just just do your your job to the best of your ability, mentality. Kind of. <laughs> I said, it, I'd say it's a bit, it's, it's a little bit different because I suppose you're, you're pushed to stretch yourself as far as you possibly can all the time. Um, so it's maybe not a great example <laughs> <laughs> uh, because yeah, I said, you're training, you're training men to do what they what what or to make them believe they can do whatever whatever it takes under pressure. So I suppose there's a bit of a, a bit of a bit of a gap for that one. But yeah, I, I mean I'm I'm a, I'm a firm believer that as I said before, if if you can't if you can't do it in the house, then it's not going to happen on the board. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. So. Uh... You know, it's been great uh, delving into the diving into this this kind of uh, topic. We could talk all day about it. Uh, it's pretty complicated. I uh, hope to do some more things in the future. Bruce, you know, certainly you've uh, you've written about it a lot, and and the three of you have lived it. Uh, you've uh, some of the winningest people uh, out there, and but you know, your perspective is really really interesting, and hopefully. Uh, uh, watchers, readers uh, of of this will will take something away from it and be inspired and feel better about what they do. 
because it uh, can be a, a tough thing to deal with sometimes because we're, we can't possibly always win at everything. So I want to thank you for uh, Ben Duncan, Jenny Hazard, Bruce Gandy for taking the time uh, today. And it's been a, a great discussion. Pleasure. It's great. Thank you. All right. Thank All you.